an entitled dad loses his mind and makes a scene at a movie theater, all because he didn't get what he wants. And because of his actions, he got kicked out of the theater. I work at a movie theater, and the other day, there was a father and his kid coming to see the new Jurassic World Dominion movie. They were in line for concessions, asking to purchase the limited edition popcorn bucket we advertised for the movie. So they walk up to the concession stand, I take their order, and confirm that they want two regular popcorns and two medium drinks. The dad chimes in and says, yeah, but I have one question. My son saw this popcorn bucket being advertised along the movie. Do you guys still have any? I looked up and I told him, unfortunately, we sold out on opening night and we aren't expecting to get any more. I then apologize for the inconvenience because I know some customers like to have these buckets. He then says, well, uh, what about the one behind you? Can we have that one instead? The one he was referring to was a display. So I told him, no, sir, that's not for sale. This guy starts screaming and yelling. He says, that's ridiculous. I bet you still have some and you're just refusing to check because you're lazy. It takes me a second to respond, but I say, sir, we told every guest who wanted it coming in today that we are sold out. Please go to your auditorium and enjoy your movie. There is literally a line of people waiting to get in and I don't want them to miss their movie just because of this. His kids started crying because of what I said after this and that he wanted the popcorn bucket despite it being sold out. I would have happily given them the popcorn bucket if we weren't sold out of it. The entire dad demanded me to get a manager and claimed he was going to get me in trouble for ruining his vacation. I tell him to please wait over here so I can get these customers into their movie. And while yes, there were other registers and people there, but because of the way he acted, he made everything go slower for the other customers because he refused to move away a few steps away from the register. The manager comes in and the conversation goes a little bit something like this. The manager approaches him and says, hello, how can I help you today, sir? The entitled dad goes right into it and And he says, yes, this inconsiderate man refuses to give me this special Jurassic World popcorn bucket. My manager repeats everything I said and says, sadly, we are sold out of the popcorn bucket and we are not anticipating any more. The entitled dad chimes in and basically says that this guy probably isn't even the real manager and that he's just trying to back me up. He then again demands that we sell him the one that we use as a display that's standing behind us. The manager says that we cannot sell you that one as it's just as display and we aren't getting any more so there's nothing I can do in that regard the entitled dad decided that this was not enough so he demands to speak to the one in charge of the entire building we called a general manager who is higher up than the normal managers and have honestly the most power here at the theater and she explained to him exactly what we've been telling him the situation was honestly going nowhere and he decided to dump one of his popcorns he paid for all over me I was covered in it and he told me to apologize for my behavior when I was just doing my job after this he got kicked out of of the building and as a cherry on top he didn't get a refund either especially with the way he was acting what an absolute nut job it takes a special kind of stupid for someone to demand something that an organization or a business simply ran out of like they literally ran out of buckets after opening night how can you not understand that and then as a result of going through literally every manager this entitled dad decided to assault the person that told him no in the first place that's just crazy to me I mean this entitled dad was ready to risk everything jail time a mis- demeanor all for that bucket for his stupid kid to eat out of but overall this is kind of a silly thing to get upset about and hopefully that guy never goes back to that theater and acts like that ever again today I messed up by asking my employer of three years how much maternity leave I would receive after I had my baby while also suggesting that I work part-time remotely instead I got fired and now I'm in complete shock and I don't know what to do my husband and I conceived in March and we started to plan how we would handle the logistics of our first child since we both work full time. My husband works remotely and I work in an office. I wanted to be able to work remotely as well and go into the office as needed so that I can still be home with my baby. I thought the worst case scenario was that I would be given a few weeks of maternity leave and then, if they disagreed with remote work, that I would just go into the office per usual and we would hire a caretaker to help with the baby during the day. Well, I was completely wrong. After scheduling a meeting with my boss to notify him of the topic of discussion, I was told that I wouldn't be given any maternity leave and that it would not be paid by the company and that the state would pay 67% of my salary for 12 weeks and that after 12 weeks, I shouldn't bother returning to the office. Basically, I was fired and given zero maternity leave. I am in shock. I really like this place and I thought they liked me too, but I guess not. This is a terrible situation to be in and I'm not talking about the original poster here. I'm of course talking about her former employer 
lawyer. You see, this person just fired them for being pregnant. And I'm no lawyer, but I'm pretty sure there's laws that protect against this. I know of FMLA as well as PDA, both of which protect employers from terminating employees due to pregnancy or pregnancy-related conditions. I'm not a lawyer, so you shouldn't take my advice, but personally, if I was in her situation and I had a baby on the way and I had just gotten fired for having a baby on the way, you better believe I'd be getting a lawyer. There's no way I would let that fly for a second. I would absolutely record everything. I'd get every kind of statement, everything in writing. I'd get witnesses to the situation and I would get myself a lawyer. I would get that ball rolling almost immediately, document everything and use it as proof. This is illegal. You can't just fire someone because they're pregnant, all because they're trying to inquire about maternity leave. And it's not like the lady wasn't offering solutions to try and make it so she could still work. She said, hey, just put me on part-time remote work and I can still do my job while also being around my newborn child. Hopefully this original poster is able to find some success in this endeavor. And personally, I hope they find justice for getting fired just for being pregnant because that's just not fair. And I'm pretty sure that's illegal. My boyfriend questions my cooking skills and he doesn't understand why it offends me. For some context, I went to culinary school. I've worked in food and I cook all of our meals at home. My boyfriend has mentioned before how his mother will always undercook things and personally prefers things on the well done side. Every time I cook meat, I check the temperature to make sure it's cooked to the needed temperature. I'll set the plate in front of him and he will prod at the meat, pull it apart and inspect it. He then will say that it's raw and start saying that it should be a specific color to be cooked. I've explained to him that dark meat chicken will always have a hue to it, but he disagrees. He will refuse to eat it and always ask me to cook it more. If I refuse because I think it will ruin it, he will go slap all of his food in a hot pan and burn it to a crisp. He even does it with eggs. If I scramble eggs or fry them, if the yolk isn't that overcooked gray, he won't eat it. It's incredibly frustrating. Today, I cooked chicken wings. I grilled them on our stovetop grill and then stuck them in the oven and even added 10 additional minutes. We start eating and he starts pulling a wing apart and inspecting it. He sets it down and ate all of his sides. He then mentions that if the bone is that color, it means that it's raw, apparently. I got a little upset and said, I checked the temperature. I cooked it longer. Do I need to burn it to a crisp for you? He said that I was getting too offended, so I took his wings and I put them on the stove and burnt them completely black. I gave it to him and he said it was perfect. I was irritated because I had just bought a new spice blend and wanted to make a specific recipe, and now it's just completely burnt. He told me, you shouldn't get so offended that I don't want food poisoning. I then asked him if I've ever given him food poisoning, and he said no. I then told him that it feels like he doesn't trust my integrity as a chef to cook food properly, and I do find it offensive that he is always questioning my ability to properly cook. I just don't know what I should do. I'm honestly unsure of how to show him that the things he's saying and the way he says it is really hurting my feelings, as well as ensure to him that I am properly cooking his food. He's angry with me for getting mad at him for wanting his chicken cook longer. How can I make him see he's being an immature, picky child because he wants all of his food burnt? What should I do? This is such a terrible thing to have to go through, especially for someone who went to school for this. They busted their butt in culinary school, learning all the ins and outs of cooking, only to then have their husband who knows nothing about cooking, to then criticize and pick apart everything they're doing. It's just incredibly mean and really toxic. Like, you don't treat someone like that. But thankfully, there is an easy solution. And I think this will take away a lot of your stress. Simply stop cooking for him. Just stop. Tell him that you love him and that you want him to be secure in what he's eating. So you're just not going to cook for him anymore. If he wants to make any food, he can do it himself. Burn it to a crisp. This way you can still enjoy the food that you like and he can make whatever he wants. If he's going to be that hypercritical of what you make every single time, then it's time for him to step up and start making stuff for himself. That will send a very clear message to him that he's being very rude and disrespectful. And to me, this doesn't seem like a question of what type of food you like. It really is just a lack of respect. He's being hypercritical while you're kind enough to even cook for him in the first place. And when he's being super critical and overly critical, in my opinion, he tries to pass it off as, wow, you're getting really offended. Like, that's abusive language. If he really has some kind of phobia of having undercooked food, then he can cook for himself. That's my personal opinion on this matter. So stop cooking for him and only cook for yourself. That way he can enjoy his food how he wants, and you can absolutely enjoy what I'm sure is the delicious meals that you cook every day. My girlfriend is jealous of my friendship with another woman, and I don't know what to do about it. So I have a girlfriend by the name of Diana. This is not her real name, and we have been together for eight years since our senior year of college. We moved in together after three years at the age of 25. After college, I applied for and got an amazing job at a 
a company that I had no right getting, which I'm still at to this day. I want to emphasize that I really shouldn't have gotten my current job, like the other candidates were coming in with prior experience, references, and master degrees. Meanwhile, I came in with a bachelor's degree, a cocky attitude, and a nice smile. Apparently, it came down to the fact that they could pay me less, and that I had some interesting ideas, and that I nailed the interview. This is all relevant later, by the way. Anyway, I've since been promoted and added to an absolutely amazing team of co-workers. We're among the most productive in the entire company, and have the most amazing camaraderie. We're like family, to be honest. We have a bi-weekly happy hour, we are all really cool with each other's significant others, and we regularly do group activities outside of work. One day, about four years ago, a new woman was added to our team, who I will call Sarah. This is also not her real name. Sarah is an instant fit into our team. She gets our sense of humor, she's a total team player, and she's a beast at her job. Initially, the vibe between me and Sarah were a little weird. I'm a very shy person by nature, and I'm not really one to initiate conversation. Until one day at happy hour, she sat with me alone and told me that I don't have to be nervous around her. From there, we became fast friends. I found out she's a huge nerd like I am, and she loves to cosplay. The day Sarah was introduced to us, I told Diana that we had a new addition to our team and that it was a woman. Me and Diana have an inside joke where if we mention that we meet new people, we ask if they're hot, guy or girl, and we answer truthfully. Obviously, she asked me if she's hot, and I say, yeah, kinda, and we kinda leave it at that. However, things started to go downhill six months after Sarah joined the team. We had a group bowling session where our significant others were invited, and that's when Diana met Sarah for the first time. They were cool cordial, and from what I can tell, they both had a good conversation. What they talked about, I couldn't tell you. I was way too focused on the game. However, on our way home, Diana was very upset with me. She said that Sarah wasn't just kinda hot, she was smoking hot, and that she was flirting with me the entire evening. I couldn't believe what she was telling me. I legitimately stared at her like she had three heads, while she's sitting there completely pissed off at me. Now, Sarah is a very attractive woman. To paint you a picture, she's blonde, she's tall, and she's really into fitness. So, she is muscular with a six-pack. In fact, she gets mistaken for an Instagram model quite often. This isn't me checking her out, by the way. This is just me showing you that I'm not blind. She's also a shameless flirt and an extrovert. She knows how to get what she wants just through her words and eye contact. This helps us out tremendously at work, as we send her to close deals. In fact, she's been fast-tracked for a management position because she's so good at her job. Anyway, Diana says that she doesn't expect me to notice because apparently men are clueless, but her body language and the way she looked at me and that she kept on touching me indicated that she was flirting with me. Also, apparently she laughed at everything I said. I told her that she was insane and that's just how Sarah is. She is very flirty and she's just very touchy. She insisted that she noticed the difference between my other male team members and me and said there was a huge difference. I'll spare you the details of the rest of the argument, but I assured her that Sarah didn't like me. As time went on, me and Sarah became really close friends. Much to the chagrin of Diana, we developed the chemistry only best friends could have, and we started to do more solo stuff from the team, like going to conventions, seeing movies, and even working out. She even started calling me her work husband. To try and be more mindful of Diana's feelings, I set up healthy boundaries between her and me, and made sure that she knew that we were just friends, and that I would keep my girlfriend in the loop on everything we did. In addition, we would invite her along as well when possible. She laughed at me and said that I didn't even have to mention it. We were just close friends. Diana was always invited to go along with us when we hung out, but she turned it down because the activities never interested her. Over time, however, I realized that hanging out with Sarah was making her upset, so I cut down the number of times we would hang out solo and spent more time with her. Sarah would get upset too, but she understood, saying that, well, I'd be mad too if I were her. Eventually, a few months before the pandemic, me and Sarah were best friends in all but name. We had insane chemistry and the team joked that we should just hook up because we look cute together. I shut it down immediately, but Sarah, being the idiot that she was, leaned into it and told everyone that we were work married and gave me a sarcastic hug. I jokingly said that while our work relationship was toxic and that while she was married to me, I was single. Everyone, especially Sarah, laughed and we carried on, but still, I never thought of Sarah in a romantic way. I was and am still madly in love with Diana, 
because she's the love of my life. Meanwhile, Diana isn't happy with our relationship, but since I'm keeping her in the loop and spending time with her, she doesn't complain. Then the pandemic hits and we are in lockdown, and Diana is noticeably happier since I won't be around Sarah for the foreseeable future. She even told me this herself. In order to promote some normalcy, the team decided to do a bi-weekly happy hour from home. However, Sarah demands that me and her have a best friend lunch Zoom date once a week. I don't see much of a reason not to do it, but I clear it first with Diana. She got upset right away and told me absolutely not. We proceeded to have a long argument where she told me that she thinks that Sarah's trying to steal me away from her and that I liked her more than my wife. This wasn't true. She just felt that way because me and Sarah had a lot of common interests and hobbies, aka the nerd stuff. Me and Diana don't have many common interests, but we have a strong relationship built on love and trust. I put my foot down and I tell her that the jealousy of Sarah has got to stop. She's my friend and that's where it stays. I've kept her in the loop on everything and offered both my phone, my one from work, as well as my personal one as proof that everything is platonic. I even point out that she has male friends who she hangs out with solo as well. Diana says that she does trust me, but it's just Sarah that she doesn't trust. That I just don't see things everyone else is seeing. I tell her that we just have similar personalities, that Sarah isn't attracted to me because I'm not her type, and that she has met her boyfriend in the past. And yes, Sarah did have a boyfriend of a year at the time. In fact, we had a few dinners together, as well as went on hikes and biking sessions all together. In fact, he loved that me and Sarah were just good friends. The argument ended with me making sure she knew that me and Sarah were just friends overall, and that I'm in love with only her. Fast forward to last summer, and our work is asking us to do a hybrid work from home as well as in-office experience. And Sarah practically begs me to come back at the same time as her. In addition, me and Sarah get added on to a special project, which would mean we'd spend a lot of late hours together on Zoom as well as in the office. Diana was furious but knew that this was for work and not for pleasure. Diana would hang around my home office while on Zoom sessions with Sarah and pop in when she heard me laughing. It got annoying but I learned to deal with it. At the end of the summer, our project was completed and we were able to go back to our normal hours. One day after work, I walked into a surprise birthday party for me and it was something that Sarah had organized with our team members at our favorite bar. Diana saw the post on Snapchat and she was incredibly upset because in one of the snaps, Sarah gave me a peck on the cheek and in the other one, she called me her work husband. I told her it was just an inside joke at the office, but she wasn't having it. I then asked her if she was jealous of Sarah and she said that yes, she made her feel insecure. She said, yeah, I'm insecure. My boyfriend has better chemistry with a tall, blonde, gorgeous, younger woman in ridiculous shape than me. I told her that she was being shallow and unfair. She told me whatever and to just go enjoy my girlfriend. In the interest of preserving my relationship, I pull back on hanging out with Sarah. She understands completely but is devastated. We still talk plenty at work and at team activities, but no more solo stuff. Things get a lot better between me and Diana for about six months and she doesn't bring up Sarah anymore, but things came to a head last week. Sarah broke up with her longtime boyfriend a few months prior and she was feeling particularly lonely so she rang me up to try and hang out. It had been at least six months since me and her had done anything solo so I figured that Diana would be okay with it. I then told Diana that we wanted to hang out and if she wanted to come she was welcome. To my utter surprise she agreed to come along. We then proceeded to have an amazing time hanging out and I made sure to devote what I felt was equal time to both women. Afterwards though things Things went downhill fast. Diana exploded on me as soon as we got home. She said that Sarah looked incredibly upset that she was even there and that we were way too close to each other emotionally and apparently she was being very possessive of me and was touching me way too much and that I was stupid to not realize what she was doing. She then told me that she doesn't want me hanging out with Sarah anymore and that I should even start looking for other jobs to get away from her. I didn't take this very well. I love my job, I love my team, and Sarah is a very close personal friend, but I love Diana more. However, I felt she was being totally unreasonable and projecting her insecurities onto our purely platonic friendship. So I exploded on her and told her none of that was happening and that she needed to get over it. She didn't take this well at all and has been staying with her parents for the last few days just to cool off. Sarah is devastated and offered to talk to her, but I told her that would only make things worse. The entire situation has spiraled out of control and I don't know what to do. There is so much to unpack here, but I will first 
and foremost say that the original poster in this situation is 100% to blame for this. He did not listen to his girlfriend in the slightest. Sarah was very much invading his personal life and making his girlfriend's insecurity shine through. Like clearly this guy is just not seeing that this friendship is toxic and that it is ruining his girlfriend's confidence in him. Like it's one thing to have a jealousy towards someone that you don't know, but Diana knows Sarah at this point and she knows how flirty and touchy-feely she is with her boyfriend. If my girlfriend had some guy leaning and touching all over her and being way too close with her, I'd be pretty upset and jealous as well. This guy does not understand that this is not a purely platonic friendship and that the way he is acting with Sarah is completely inappropriate. They are practically going on dates together, seeing movies, going to conventions. He is even passive enough to allow Sarah to call him her work husband. That is a big red flag. It seems like he sees this as some kind of purely platonic friendship, but to Diana, you know, his girlfriend, this is spelling the end of their relationship. And sure, I'll give the benefit of the doubt in this situation. I'll go ahead and say that maybe Sarah isn't trying to get it between Diana and the original poster, but with the way she is acting and how obviously flirty she's being with this man, it really begs the question, what are you really trying to accomplish? And hey, maybe they are good friends and maybe that's as far as it goes, but I don't think it's unreasonable for Diana to say, hey, you need to step away from this lady. If he really cared about his girlfriend and if he really cared about the situation, he would do everything he can to make sure that Diana is happy. Like for me, the whole work wife thing as well as the dates you practically took her on should have stopped immediately. You didn't respect your girlfriend's boundaries and now guess what? She is now staying at her parents' house incredibly upset with you. Couples counseling is definitely in store in my personal opinion. But what would you do if you were in this situation? This is a big one. Leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, use the playlist at the top of the description. And the next time you live stream, use the cream of the crop music. Search cream of the stream on Spotify or whatever platform you use for copyright free music to use for your next stream.